about 20 years ago, maybe 30 years ago now, um, you know, obviously most of y'all know I uh, was um, pastoring in a, a Christian church till y'all woke me up to the truth. But I remember um, moving to Fresno and um, there was this, you know, like in every major city, they have like the hood and, you know, like, like the hood hood. And of course, in the 90s, then, you know, maybe the early 2000s, they were still reeling and um, from the uh, from crack crack was still big and and all and all sorts of drugs you know on the streets of chemicals and it was just terrible and so you know crime was just off the matter of fact i think i think at, at one point fresno was in the top five of, of of the nation in um in crime and in murder and all that kind of stuff it was just a terrible place and, and our hoods were just unbelievably terrible and so down in the ghetto and down in the hood, uh, you know, it was very dangerous to live there, dangerous to drive through there, it was dangerous to be caught there um, late at night. And I ain't talking about now being caught in like, you know, around like the Klan and in the, in the, in the <laughs> I'm not talking about being caught in an all white neighborhood. No, I'm talking about how dangerous it is or it was to be caught in that area, especially during that time, it was just, you know, if you caught at night, boy, you might not make it home. And that's real talk. Uh, if you did make it home, you might be bleeding. So they decided, a lot of these um, so-called white churches that, that were in the North, um, they felt bad for the Nicos, the Nicos, and they felt bad for the Mexican and they were like, boy, we got to go down here and help these poor people. They just, they don't know this and that, blah, 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 blah. So they decided, of course, you know, that we're going to do our mission work right here in town. We don't need to go all over the world when there's mission, there's a mission field right there. And so what they started doing, um, they bought up a, a, a couple of houses that were like, in the middle of the hood, when I say the middle, y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. Like in the, they were they found like the highest uh, murder, drugs, crime, all kind of whatever. They found the highest place, the highest percentage of of uh, wickedness, and they went down there and bought a couple of houses. And what they would do is they would send from the north side they would send their youth like teenagers and young adults in their 20s and stuff they would send them down into that area to do mission work and these people were going to the hood i'm talking about places where even the moray didn't want to go down there cuz i don't you know it's, it's, well I, I ain't going to talk about that but anyway they were talking about i'm talking about hood hood and um, they would send them down into the hood to do work in, in the hood. And they had to move so they would, like, live there. They didn't just go down on the weekend. They would live down there. And and every day they'd be trying to do things to help the hood here, help this, help that, or whatever. And um, I remember them having, like, a meeting. And one of the things that happened in the meeting uh, Cause I was always priv uh, you know, privileged to go to uh, privy or allowed to attend these meetings. And I was in one of the meetings and I was hearing them talk, you know, like, yeah, you know, being down here, you know, we really get a chance to relate with these people. And we down here, we really get a chance to see things the way they see it. And we really see things like, you know, we were, the experience was so real to us, you know, like how they have to live and all that kind of stuff. And they went on and on and on and on and on and on and on talking about that. And, you know, I just, it got to a point where, you know, even then I couldn't take it no more. And I said, uh, I just want to say thing, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, they're, all right, yes, want to say something. So yeah, um, I'm not putting down nobody and I appreciate y'all effort, you know, coming down here and helping the hood out and, you know, doing, doing the work. And I'm sure, 
you know, you're making a difference. But to say that you understand what they're going through and that because you stayed down here for six months or, or a year to tell me that now you can see eye to eye on all the stuff because you actually live here and all that kind of stuff. I said, that's kind of a stretch. And they were like, what? We actually living down here. I said, no, 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 no. You're doing a mission here. See, you don't live here. You live in the north. I know it. And you know it. So, in reality, somebody in the north bought these houses. So, you guys don't have to worry about going to work, paying no rent. These houses are paid for. You live in these houses. These are these are like mission houses. So, one, you ain't got to go to work every day trying to pay the rent. So, you don't know what that's like. Number two, the fact that you're here from the north and your your churches, you know, you guys know everybody. So you no doubt told the policeman, hey, can you can you make sure you drive around the mission houses to make sure that, you know, and so no doubt when you go by there, you know, the police cars are making sure during the day and during the, in the evening that they're watching out what on for the mission houses. Everybody in the hood don't got the police doing that for them. And I went on, and I, I don't remember exactly because it's been so long ago, but I remember saying this. I said, and besides all of that, at any time, any one of you can just pick up the phone. At any time. You say, man, I'm out of here. At any time, you can call your daddy. Hey, dad, can you come get me? I'm, I don't want to stay there anymore. And guess who's coming? Pops is driving. From across town, he's going to come pick you up, put your put your your bags and stuff in the back of that white pickup. And y'all going back to the north. At any time, you can call your mom. At any time, and mama going to come pick you up. Any time you get broke or you do something and you make a mistake, you can just pick up the phone and call your parents or you're going to call an uncle or somebody. Let's say you spent too much money and now you don't have enough for the food or whatever. You ain't going to starve because you got a phone. You're going to pick up that phone and you're going to call your rich uncle, your rich auntie. They're going to bring as much food, whatever you need to that house. These people who live in the hood, number one, they don't own these houses. Number two, they don't have that ability to just pick up a phone make one phone call and throw their stuff in the back of a truck and be out of there. That's not what happened. So while I appreciate what you all are doing, just know that I know that it ain't the same. <laughs> and they looked at me like, is he really just going to bust our bubble like that? Of course. Now that's been 20, 30 years ago. And let me tell you what's, what's interesting. I was putting together this, this series to help the kings and queens of Israel. That's us. And I was reminded about that. I was reminded about that exchange and, and that work that was going on. And the Most High said, well, it's the same with you. What? He was like, you do know that you're the rich kid. And you're doing mission work in poverty. <laughs> Wait, huh? You Israel. Okay. Yeah. You see our situation? Yes. You see our struggle? Of course I see it. You hear them sirens every night? Yes. You you see these drug addicts out in front of the house? Yes. You see this 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 violence? Yes, I see it all. But you all got an advantage over the rest of the world. What is that? You can make a phone call. They can't. 
Wait, we can do what? See, all this arguing and complaining that you keep doing on this side, it's not Yah's fault that you don't know that Yah is your dad. That's not Yah's fault that you don't know that in the covenant that you are in, there are promises built into the covenant. And some of those promises is why the rut, because of those promises, some of those promises is the reason that all of the rest of the world got a problem with you. Just like them people in the hood had a problem with them missionaries. They always would say to these missionaries, you know what? But you ain't from here. You ain't from here. You ain't from here. You don't know what it's like to be born here. You don't know what it's like to be raised here. And they was like, okay, but we still trying to feed you. We still trying to help you. So what? So what? You still ain't one of us, right? And they used to feel so bad because they wasn't one of them. Most High told me. <laughs> he was like, you looking at that thing wrong, man. You ain't one of them either. You in the world, yes, but you're not of the world. You got an Elohim. That's why he told us, look, when you go out in this world trying to be light and salt, don't take on their ways. They, not, they don't have riches like you. Your father runs the sky. He runs heaven. He owns the earth. One of the things that you need to realize is that you could pick up the phone at any time and call your heavenly father at any time. And here he come to your rescue. When you're doing his work and you get hungry, all you got to do is call him. And he, next thing you know, here comes some food. The rest of the world, why, what, 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 why are they so blessed? When we want to learn how to play music, most of us don't even have to go to school. And when we want to learn how to play music, most of us, all we got to do is just sit down at an instrument long enough and pray. Next thing you know, we playing music. Better than everybody else, too. How you do that? We in a covenant. Somebody say, well, that ain't fair. You could just pick up the phone. Well, I ain't saying nothing about being fair. I'm talking about what's true. And because you don't know that, you can't blame Yah, especially now on this side of the captivity. You ought to be able to see it now. We're living on a whole nother level post-captivity. Messiah, uh, when he was here, but you know, he's our king, he's our king, and he is our example. The whole time he was here, not one time while he was here, not one time did he ever act like he wasn't from above. Not one time. He said, y'all, I'm not from here. What? Uh -uh. No, my father's rich. He owns everything. It's my father's will. But look how you live it. Yeah, but I'm down. I'm doing that just because I'm trying to relate. But if I get hungry, I, c I could take two fish and five loaves of bread and feed 5,000 people with it. I ain't worried about food. What about if you get, you know, what about if you get thirsty? What do you mean if I get thirsty? I can turn water into wine. I can bring water from dry places. I can get water out of a rock if I have to. How are you living like that? My dad, he owns it all. And just because you don't know that, don't mean I don't know that. So his disciples are walking with him. What are we going to eat? He was like, what? 
I'm just saying, like, man, what are we going to eat? You know, what are we going to drink? Oh, my gosh. I don't, I don't understand your question. I mean, like, what are we going to wear? What are we going to eat? How are we going to survive? We're just out here walking with our dear... I was like, wow. That's how you see it. So your eye is so messed up. It's so dark that even the light that's coming into your eye is turning into darkness before it can hit your heart. You're walking with me and you can't see that you have a heavenly father that knows you need everything before you even ask. You, you can't see that. You can look at grass and see flowers, but you can't see yourself being closed. You can look at birds getting seeds and getting worms out the ground every morning, but you can't see yourself eating you're like well, ooh. listen y'all just seek the kingdom your father you know. I'm going to give you one more example in the revelation how can I say that that y'all uh, that uh, he, he told one assembly he said you all think you're poor and I get it but you don't know you're rich what? You don't know you're rich. I didn't stutter. I said, you're rich. But you think you're poor. And that's a shame. Why? Because as a man thinks, according to the Proverbs, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You don't know that even though you think you're poor, you're actually rich. How am I rich? Because you have me. Your royalty. It doesn't matter where you put royalty. Royalty is always rich. What time is it? Oh, I might as well say it. I'll put it in this video. Uh, once again, I don't um I don't I don't believe in the in the legitimacy of the uh the European um royalty and leadership in the world. I don't believe in it. I just believe it's false. I believe it's of Hasatan and the results are, are evident. But I will say this. When when that redhead boy said when he when he fell in love with that sister and she said, um, I'm out of here. He was willing, not just willing, he did leave all of that. I mean, I'm out here too, shoot. Why? Because he knows deep down in his heart that they are illegitimate. He ain't dumb. They study the records. They know it better than you know it. And they know what that's all about. They understand that that's getting too... When you marry a sister who is probably one of the descendants of the house of Israel, you're getting too close to putting Israel, to putting the throne back into the hands of its rightful owner, which is the children of Israel. Because if this young man grows up and he also falls in love with another Israelite and then they fall in love with an Israelite, guess what? The crown will go back into the hands of Israel where it's supposed to be in the first place. So he already knew all that. But let me tell you something. The reason why he was able to just bounce is because he like, well, it really don't matter where I go. They can't stop the fact that I'm royalty. I don't care where I live. I gotta go. Zion, y'all have a great day. Enjoy yourself. But that boy was like, what are y'all talking about? I don't care where I go. I can live in Madeira, Fresno. I can live in Santa Barbara, California. I can live in Canada. I can live in, it don't matter where I go. Everybody know that that man, they getting ready to crown as the king. Everybody know that's my daddy. Everybody know that 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 that, that boy that, that that is is is. Everybody know you know the one that married the one that don't. You know what I'm saying. Everybody know that's my brother. Come on, it don't matter. So I don't care where I go. I'm gonna always live who I am. I'm a king. Whether or not you say I can be a part of the kingdom or not, whether or not you allow me to be a part of the coronation service or not, what does that mean? When everybody know that that's my dad, and it don't matter if I get down and out or if I need something. 
think I worry? You think that he is worried about, and I'm talking about even illegitimate. You think he's worried about anything? No, not, not like the stuff that you would be worried about. He might have some other concerns, but he ain't got no base concerns. Why? Because ain't no one in the world you're going to convince him any otherwise that that's not his daddy that they're getting ready to crown as king. He is the king of England right now. It's his dad. And you all, me and you, our heavenly father is greater. So much so that he says when it comes to the other nations of the world, compared to my nation Israel, I count them as nothing, even less than nothing. They're like a drop in a bucket or something when it come to me. So Israel, we're going to talk about this mindset and our, we change our mentality. Start realizing, you know what? We're just down here to do work and to do a mission. And while we're doing that work, we already know that our Father, our Heavenly Father, knows everything we're doing and, every, and that we're walking according to His work and His will. He knows. So all we got to do is pick up the phone and call Him. Hoo-wee. That's some show sure enough favor. And that's part of the power and the authority of this birthright. Hallelujah. 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 After this video, I'm going to go call him right now. <laughs> and tell him thank you. Shalom, Zion. Support the work of the art as we continue to support you. One love.